Hi, we're Vicki and Joe Geis. From Chester, West Virginia. And we'd like to welcome you back to Outdoor, Outdoor with, with the, the Morgan. Morgan. So welcome back everyone, Mike here. I want to start today's video by thanking everyone that has been sending in the introductions for our videos. They have been fantastic. We probably got 250 of them so far from all over the world and we're trying to get as many in as we can. Now Melissa and I mentioned the other day, if you care to, you know, you could send in a closing to the video. Something like, hey, I'm Bob from Wichita Falls. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button, click subscribe, share them with your friends and email those to Outdoors with the Morgans and we'll put them at the end. So far we only have got maybe half a dozen of them or something like that, so we need more of those. Now remember, hold your phone this way, make it 15, 18 seconds long, however you want to do it. Get creative, send them in, we'll randomly pick them and drop them in each video. But anyway, this evening I'm going to saw a little bit of red pine on the uh, wood miser. I started off with the uh, MS-880. This weekend I need to sharpen that saw and it's going to take a long time. It's a four foot bar on there. Uh, that's the big saw, 121 cc's, very heavy. I don't use it much at all, but when you need it, you need it. And uh, I'm going to do a hand filing video this weekend. Now, I am no expert on that, but there's another video out there that's really good. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of go through that video. I'm going to try it on the MS-880. And the reason I made some cuts here tonight is I'll be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison to see if I'll successful or not. It's not real dull or anything like that, but it definitely needs sharpened. And uh, I don't want to screw that chain up. It's a very pricey chain. So you'll probably see that this weekend or Monday, something like that. But right now, we're going to fire up the mill, put a red pine on there, and make some boards before it gets dark. Like I said, this is a red pine. It's about 16 inches in diameter at the big end, 10 feet long. I'll use this for some siding, for some drying sheds, and some other projects. Uh, we have a bunch of this red pine on the property. I think it was planted back in the 50s, and uh, it was planted too close together. A lot of them die. So what I'm trying to do is find the ones that have recently deceased and use those. Uh, since they're still good, but uh, yeah, it should make pretty decent lumber. I wasn't sure about this stuff at first, but it saws pretty easy. Seems like a good time of year to cut it. So uh, I'm going to get busy here. It's going to get dark.
see. It's pretty nice stuff, and it's not real sappy either, surprisingly. So I'm gonna flip it 180 degrees, take another piece off it, and I got an idea I'm gonna run by. It should work out. This little groove right here, that's from the debarker. I'm just gonna get a measurement here. That's about a quarter inch. Some people were saying that the uh, debarker was set a little bit low. The cutters on the debarker is about 5 16 something like that. So it is hitting it, but I could adjust it just a little bit more, but it's pretty close right now. Next time I'm down here, I'll do that. What the debarker does, cleans the bark off the leading edge where the blade hits it, kind of extends your uh, blade life by removing like the dirt and a lot of bark is actually, you know, it's more abrasive than the wood itself. So if you can get that off of there before that blade hits it, it will extend the life of your blade.
right, it's getting dark. I'm gonna finish that can up tomorrow night. I wanna take a minute, just kinda go over the controls on this mill. A lot of people have been asking about it and I never really showed this part. Uh, so this switch right here, this is for the debarker. It moves it in or out. Sometimes you'll see when I'm sawing, I get to the end of the log, I'll flip it out of the way. That's what controls that. This turns the debarker on and off right here. This right here is like your blade guide. It'll move over, you try to keep it pretty close to the log. Sometimes when the logs flare out, you know, you're gonna have to move this out as you get through the log. Uh, this right here is your forward and your vert and reverse. This is a power feed mill. Uh, you put that forward, it's not gonna go anywhere until you turn this knob. This controls the speed and you just kind of get used to it. Uh, I have a lot to learn, but you can listen to the engine and kind of tell how fast you should be going. You don't want to go too slow and you don't want to go too fast. So that's all that. This is your up and down right here. Uh, that raises the mill up or down. And this one, I got the simple set works with it, which is really, really nice. Especially with a guy like me that wears reading glasses. I'm going to start it up and kind of show you how that works. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me over top of the mill. It's in manual mode right now. You can set whatever thickness you want. Right now I have it set at one inch. Uh, these siding boards that I'm cutting, they'll end up at seven eighths inch thick because the blade is about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. But you can set this anywhere you want. You know, if you want eight quarter stuff exactly two inches thick, I'll go uh, two and an eighth and you'll get two inch thick pieces. It's very easy. And it works really, really well, like I said, with my eyes. I, I wear reading glasses, and it's kind of hard, you know, to see the uh, guide on the mill. This is much better for me, and it's super accurate. I mean, it's right on the money. So I'll set it back at one inch, at one inch, and then all you do is bump this lever over here, and it drops down an inch. I was saying earlier I had an idea and it involves this uh, MS-880 right here. A lot of people ask me what I do with the slabs. I don't do anything with them right now. I have a big pile over there in the corner and every once in a while I come grab the ones from the mill, pile them up over there. Uh, eventually I might cut them up for firewood, but I was thinking build maybe uh, like a table, heavy duty table, load those things up there uh, with the forks and then use this 880 and I mean you could cut a bunch of them at one time. I think that would be a that would work out pretty good, actually. You know, have like a cradle there where you just dump them in, cut them all in 16, 18 inch pieces, whatever you want. But you could go through 30 of them at a time or something with that saw right there. That'd be, that'll, that'll work good. Something else I want to mention before I wrap this video up. You know how at the end of each video, I'll say, you know, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. And then sometimes at the bottom of the screen, maybe once or twice in a video, I'll, I'll put that in there. Well, that's actually important, and I would really appreciate it if you do that. Uh, I did something the other night I kind of regret, and I'm not going to do it again. We get a lot of comments lately, and I don't know where these people are coming from about us cutting trees. And most of these nasty comments you don't see because they get held for review. If people put swear words or something in a comment, you don't even see it, and I just block them and move on. But, uh, I mean, we'll get comments like tree killing, bleep, 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 thumbs down. You know what I mean? So that's where a lot of that's coming from. So the other night what I did, somebody commented about, you know, our property's gonna look like a desert. And I tried explaining to them about, you know, forest management and how there's more trees in Pennsylvania today than there was in 1910. Uh, and Pennsylvania is the biggest producing state for hardwoods in the whole country. And it all just works. And how if a big tree goes down in the woods, 50 of them automatically take their place. But every week I get comments, why am I not planting trees? And it just gets old. But what I did with this comment, I explained it in as nice a way as possible. And I pinned that comment thinking the rest of them would see it. And then like 75 or 100 people jumped on in my defense, which I appreciate that I do, but it's not necessary. From moving forward, what I'm gonna do, as soon as I see a comment like that, I'm just gonna block them and move on. Uh, some of these people, they just have no idea they have a cause and they think they're doing good. I really do think that, but they have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, I'm all for anybody that's passionate about anything that they're doing. 
but you have to at least know what you're talking about and they don't so uh, like I said moving forward as soon as I see a comment like that I'm just gonna block them move on and that'll be the end of it but that's where you guys come in I don't need you uh, getting in you know down in the dirt with those types of people if I don't see the comment or something just ignore them and uh, but it does help if you hit the like button share these videos with your friends and uh, comment that it's all good stuff so I think that's about it but it's getting dark, so like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, share them with your friends.